Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Ask Me Monday. I am Vicki Howell. How are you doing? How are you? What did you do over the weekend? Where are you? I am here as always from my, well, almost always, from my studio in Austin, Texas. And I would love if you would share where you are watching from and also what you worked on this weekend to sort of feed that creative spirit, to fill your creative well, as it were. So if you knit or crocheted or sewed or embroidered or painted or uh, took a photo, whatever you did, I would love to hear. And as always, treat the comments section as your community boards and share patterns and tutorials and recipes and anything that you think would help other people feed their creative spirit. All right, so what I worked on this weekend actually relates to what we're going to be doing today. But first, let me say hi to a couple of people. We've got uh, we've got She Can't Knit or Crochet. Hello, hello, busy in the shop. We've got uh, Suzanne in New Mexico. Nice to see you here. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Hey, Debbie, a fellow Texan. Hi, Debbie, good to see you. All right, so I, this weekend, worked on, oh, Karen, it's so nice to see you in the Netherlands. I, this weekend, worked on something that was, it's a little random, which I love. I feel really um, grateful that I get to work in a job that brings me all kinds of bits of random that keeps my life exciting. And so what I did today is, or over the weekend, is I yarn bombed a vintage phone from the 70s. So this was an iconic style of phone um, about in the 70s. And I am working, I'm on an influencer team for a mobile app called um, Visible. And so I do different posts on Instagram. I'm part of this team and we do a bunch of stuff on Instagram. And so my take was on the, on the latest um, project was to yarn bomb an old school phone. And it was really fun. I love the challenge of yarn bombing and I love how sculptural crochet is. Nine times out of 10, if I have to cover something that is not just a square or a cylinder that I can wrap, I'm going to choose crochet over knitting because it is so sculptural. Because you don't have to mess with a bunch of short rows to get shaping, you can just change the height of the stitch. And what really made the decision of what we were gonna do today was when I created the cord. These are these spirals have been around, you know, forever. When I was a kid in the 80s, they were really big as like hair ties or whatever. And they're super kitschy. Like obviously this is not going to be a chic addition to everything, but they're really fun to make. And I think that they look, they kind of add a cool, well, maybe not cool, but they add like a retro kitschy um, layer to a package if you were wrapping it or they could create you know, some kind of fun toy for a kid or whatever. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is spirals. And then after spirals, we're gonna talk more about other shapes, about puffs and points. Today is really about crochet play. And it is brought to you by our friends at Knitter's Pride in the US or North America, Knit Pro Elsewhere. So um, if you haven't checked out, knitterspride.com please do they have so many great tools for knitters and crocheters and beyond uh, let me just say hello to a couple more people debbie in new york so great to see you as usual we've got um oh wait 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 is one of our one of our regulars uh the grand dam of watching um ask me monday it's chris and it's her birthday Happy birthday, Chris. So happy to have you here and thank you for spending part of this day. Alrighty, so we are going to talk about uh, spirals. As I said before, we are also going to play with scale and then we're gonna talk about puffs. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly and then we'll talk about, I uh, will actually do the demo in a second. And you can find the patterns for everything I'm going to show you on my website at vickihowell.com. I've got them all written out for you. What my goal is, is just to give you sort of this idea to play with. I think these would be adorable as trims on packages. But if you want to add them as an edging to something that you've either sewn or bought at the store or have already knit or crochet, that'll work too. Or maybe you want to add an embellishment or maybe you want to turn them into a flower. You do you. Okay, so we're going to... Be working on 
points as well. I think that looks like a little pendant flag. And then we're going to be working on puffs, also known as the bullion stitch. So we will focus on all of that. And what's fun, and what I really encourage you to do when you're working with really any element, but for me, it's yarn, and today it's crochet, is to play with scale. It is so fun to watch how the same element, the same item can look so different based on the scale. So this, for example, is a tiny, teeny, teeny little, my little points here that I did on a, and this is as good a time as any to show you the hooks we're gonna be using today. It's the Zing, I got a new set from Knitter's Pride, the Zing hooks. I have a link also on my website of where you can find those. This is probably one of the most affordable sets on the market that's also great. So, um, so for I used lace weight and a little tiny hook. And then I tried it with this big Plump & Co yarn. And I used a jumbo birch hook, also from Knitter's Pride. Exact same amount of stitches, exact same amount of repeats but just playing with scale sort of really helps you think outside of the box. Right here, this could straight up be a pendant for a child's party. This, however, is so delicate that it would look really beautiful on a pillowcase edging or even a baby's garment or just very long made into a bow or a ribbon. So just think about that. Whenever you, I'm suggesting the yarns and, and, and tools, but really just let your mind go. Okay, and then uh, let's see, we talked about that, we talked about that, um, and then spirals, I'll show you, we'll talk about three different thicknesses that you can do. So we're going to jump right in. Um, like I said, I am going to be using the Zing hooks for, for all of them, and I think that what I will do is I will grab a J10, that is a six millimeter, and we are going to get going. So why don't we start with spirals? Spirals, and then if you have any questions along the way, I will try and scroll through them and um, get them answered. At the end, we will also address other questions as well. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so we are going to, we do not need that. We are going to be looking at our spirals. So spirals are so easy to make. That was honestly the easiest, but my husband, when I made that phone, he said, oh my gosh, the spiral must have been the worst. And I, I actually was like, you know, it, that was the easiest part that the, of the whole process. It really is increasing at a very like quick degree. So just massively increasing right away. So what I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you how to do one of these three because the, the process is, is the same. But on my website, you can um, you can find the, the instructions for all three or the written pattern for all three of these. And so the difference between these are, this is a single crochet spiral in the US. If you are in um, the UK or Europe, it's double crochet. This is half double crochet in the US, which I believe is half double treble um, in Europe. And this is double crochet in the US, treble crochet in Europe. So these are three different sizes. And the, I just wanted you to see what the different effect is of having the other height. The double crochet is obviously much fuller, but the single crochet really coils more. So it really just depends on what your ultimate goal is. Okay, so to do, to make a spiral, I meant to crochet, to pre-crochet a, a, a um, chain for you, and I did not. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk amongst yourself why I crochet a chain. Now, the number of chains that you're going to crochet will vary based on the length that you want your overall coil. But keep in mind, and there's not an exact science to this because it'll depend on the weight of yarn and the size hook that you're using. Keep in mind that you wanna add probably a good inch or two more 
than your desired length, not including the extra chains that you do for your first row, for your foundation row, because it will coil. It will sort of shrink up on itself. So I'm just going to show you, we're gonna be working, I'm gonna show you how to do the double crochet one. Okay, so let me go to scoot these out of the way. You may notice that I've got kind of a fancier setup than usual. It's not just my phone. You may also notice that this is the first time that I'm using it to have more than one camera. So if little things come up here and there, just know that I'm switching, crocheting, and talking all at the same time. All right, so for whatever your number of chains is, it doesn't matter for the purposes of this tutorial, we're then going to do, we're doing double crochet spirals. So for a double crochet, we are going to make the stitch in the third chain from hook, or excuse me, fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, four. A double crochet is just yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through the loop, and then we yarn over and pull through two loops twice, hence the name double. Okay, so those first three chains, let me get that a little bit closer, those are going to count as a double crochet also. We are going to make one more double crochet or treble if you're in, the U in Europe, right in that same space. So essentially we're creating a shell, a shell stitch in that chain. Okay, then you're going to, from now on, you're going to repeat this process, which is three double crochets in one chain. So one, two, three. Now you can already see, I've only done two of these, and you can already see it curling. It's because this, this wee baby chain just does not have it's stretched to the guild trying to compensate the amount of fabric that we're creating. We're tripling the fabric. So it curls up into itself. So I'm just going to do a couple more just so that you can see it start to form. So one, two, three, and then you can kind of curl it with your fingers as you're going. Oh, Tula is saying that she, um, She's used this technique to make baby mobiles above a crib, which is super adorable. The springiness of them all, as long as you're using a yarn that doesn't have a big halo that'll get in the mouths of babies, like if you use a, uh, a nice cotton, this would be great for, for baby's toys. And you can see, there you have it just turns into this really cool coil as you're going on. And that's all there is to it. So what you'll end up would be this one. The method for the half double crochet is exactly the same, only you're making three half double crochets in every stitch to the end. And you guessed it for single crochet, just three single crochet stitches in every stitch to the end. And like I said, if you just go to uh, vickihowell.com, you can, get the written directions. Also, really quickly, if you would not mind sharing this video with anybody that you think might be interested in it, that really helps the Facebook algorithm and the YouTube algorithm pick it up. Okay, so now we just talked coils. How about we talk puffs next? Okay, here's a couple of different strands. I think this would be so cute on a package. I love bobbles, I love little poofs like this, but I think it would be really cute. Um, and also if you were doing it with a small, a really fine, let's say that we were using the smaller hook like we did before, and maybe some finer yarn. I think this is a Zour Ball cotton. It would be very sweet as a scrapping book, a scrapbook element even. So just something to think about. Okay, so this stitch is actually called the bullion stitch, but I think puffs is cuter, and so I went that route, so there. Okay, so I'm just going to grab some yarn. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, so this one, 
we had to, with the last thing that we did, the curls, we had to crochet the chain, the length of the chain first. So you had to sort of, you have to have some forethought with how long you want your curl to be, your spiral. With this method, with the bobbles, and what I'm going to show you later, you don't have to know ahead of time. You can go to your heart's content if you'd like. Um, so this is really great because you can kind of decide, you know, maybe you're going to go all in and make a garland for a tree later. Or maybe you just need a little, a little, a few of these and you're going to hot glue it onto a barrette for a kid. Again, you do you, but you don't have to decide what doing you means way ahead of time. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and make my slip knot. I've got my Zing crochet hook ready to go. And let me just switch over to here. Okay. So we are going, let me move my shot. We are going to chain two, and that's it at the beginning. So from here, thought I had this done. Okay, from here, we are going to yarn over and then insert our hook in that second chain from the hook. We'll yarn over again and pull through. That's one time. We're going to repeat that process three more times, so four total. So yarn over, insert, pull through, yarn over, insert, pull through, yarn over, insert, pull through. And that's all in the same stitch. And what you'll notice is you've got a fully loaded hook. You'll have nine loops on your hook at, at this point. So this part you have to do a little wiggle waggle. You're going to yarn over and you're going to pull it through all nine loops. And now you can see that you kind of have this little bundle and this is creating your poof. You'll chain one and that locks it. So now you've got your little, look at how cute that is, your little puffy puff. And now we're going to continue on so that you have a little, you want a little breathing room in between your beads so that they don't get all smushed together and start coiling up. So we are going to chain two more and repeat the whole process. So we will yarn over, insert hook, pull through, and we're doing that four times. Two, three, four. And if you're just turning in, we're creating puffs or bullion stitch strands that can be used for ribbons or a garland or decoration or whatever. Yarn over, pull through all loops on your hook. And you could vary how many times, depending on how puffy you, you, you would like it. I did four times. You could do more or less if you wanted a skimpier puff or a puffier puff. And then we chain one to lock it off. And that's all there is to it. You would just continue for as long as you want. You do your lock off chain, so that's one, and then you do two more chains, so a total of three, to start your next little bobble. I really like how it looks when you use a chunkier yarn, too. They're all puffy and cozy and cute. This is probably the size that I would use. This is a, um, this is actually uh, my Castaway Coral from Valley Yarns Superwash, super bulky, my color collection, and I believe an L hook is what I use. So that's probably what I would do for a Christmas garland, which, or a garland for, it doesn't have to be for Christmas, just for life, or to hang you know, at a birthday party, super sweet. That's probably what I would use. Okay, so we have our curl, our spirals, we've got our puffs. That means that we are going to move on to points. Okay, so let me get to the point. Sorry, puns, puns, puns. Okay, so these are triangles, and I really like I really like a, a pointy trimming every once in a while. Crochet and knitting sometimes tend to be very feminine, and I think that if you add a little edge to it with a point, it's kind of cool. I kind of dig it. So I'm going to show you how to create these pieces. And just like with our puffs that we just did, this is created going this way so that you are you can make it as long or short as you want, and you can decide as you're going along. 
Um, let's see what people are saying. Okay, so uh, Teresa says that these would be great on a weaving piece. I agree. Um, Susie's saying variegated wool, wool would be great. Yes, that would be really fun. I agree. Um, and then, oh, Ray, Ray's saying that these would make a very cute necklace. I would love to play actually with these with leather cording and um, different materials and, and check that out for jewelry as well. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to grab, let's see. That, since I have my J out, I might as well just use it. And I'm going to, excuse me, grab my scissors. Okay, so. I'm going to use the golded again just because it's because it's right here. Okay, slip knot, the same, they all start the same. And if you're making something that you want to hang on something, don't forget to leave a long a, a bit of a tail so that you can use that to tie a loop or knot or whatever. Regardless, you should leave a tail though, so because you want to weave in the end so that it doesn't come unwound. Okay, so we are going to start by chaining again, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, what we're going to be doing is, let me just for reference. My kitten is outside playing, jumping on some paper that I threw out there. So if you can hear that, that's what it is, a crinkling. Okay, so what we're doing at this point is we're working from the point to the, to the widest part of this flag. And actually, you don't need to see me. Let me go ahead and give you my hands. Okay, so from here, what we're doing is we're, we're starting with the shortest stitch and moving all the way to the largest. So we are going to single crochet in the second chain from hook. So this is the first, this is the second. Then in the next stitch, we will half double crochet. So yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Then in the next stitch, we are going to double crochet. So yarn over, insert the hook in the chain, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And then in the last stitch, we are going to do a treble or a triple crochet. So we yarn over twice, insert the hook, pull through, that establishes us where we need to be, and then yarn over, pull through two loops three times, hence the name triple crochet. And that is all there is to it. That is our first little point, isn't it cute? And then from here, you can decide how many chains that you want to create in between. I like to have a couple just because I think that it gives a little breathing room. I think it's cute to curve it, but you could make it, you could do a loads of chains and just have these every once in a while. It's kind of up to you. Okay, so you're going to chain two now, and then you're going to make that chain five again. So we'll, so this chain two is just your little hanging space, and then you chain one, two, three, four, five, and you start the whole process again. I'll show you one more time, just a little quicker. Okay, so we're going to single crochet, and then we're going to half double crochet, and then we're going to double crochet, and then lastly, we are going to triple crochet. And there you go. That's all there is to it. And you would just continue until it is long, as long as you want. And again, just to bring these in, this is the same amount, but on a D hook. And this is the exact same pattern, but on a 25 millimeter hook. Super fun. Oops. Hook down, hook down. Really fun, easy. And a great way to just kind of play. I feel like once you start playing with trimmings, then you can understand, have a better idea of what, how you can get different shapes 
with your crochet hook and your yarn. Once you have a better understanding of that, you can really go into your own designs. If you know how to create shapes, it's like folding paper. Once you see it come together, you understand where to bend it. So hopefully you will give this a, a try and um, please tag at Vicki Howell when you're working on these. And if you end up adding them to something, putting them on a package, making bows for, um, for a child's hair, adding it to a towel, please uh, show me a picture. I love seeing you guys work. And also, if you have not already, please make sure that you follow at Vicki Howell on Facebook and on YouTube. If you're watching me on Facebook, you also need to click the little bell so that you're notified when I go live on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe. And next week we will be back here. Um, I'm thinking tentatively, we had a request on, um, on Instagram to do the exact same tutorial, but for knitting. So trimmings with knitting. If you would like that to be the topic for next week, please write in the comments section, yes, you'd love knitted trimmings. If you would like something else, please go ahead and put that in the comments section too. It doesn't have to just be knitting or crochet either. It should use yarn probably, um, but let's give that a try. Please let me know. Um, all right, let me just scroll through really quickly, make sure there's not any other questions. It looks like, um, it looks like there's not so. Um, until next time, next week is September 24th at noon central time. I will see you right back here. Have a great rest of your week. Please make sure to take a little time to be creative. Until then, breathe in, stitch out. Bye.